fans, and welcome to another edition of Al Sports Update. Alongside Dan Koob, I'm Joe Polensky. Coming up, a record-setting hitting streak is on the line for the Temple baseball team. And later, Lavoy Allen takes part in a national all-star game. But first, we're playing baseball in the Acres of Diamonds. The baseball team already has more wins this year at 15 than at all of last season and find themselves a perfect 7-0 at Skip Wilson Field. But conference play is always tough and updates Kyle Fishers in the newsroom with more on not only a conference game, but a big one against a Big Five rival. What do you have for us today there, Kay Fish? Thank you, Daniel. Joseph? After a walk-off loss in extras against Delaware, the Owls look to rebound as they travel to Ohio to take on the Dayton Flyers. But first, a Big Five matchup against St. Joe's. On Wednesday, the Owls traveled to Campbell's Field in Camden to play in the Liberty Bell Classic against their rivals. Some high notes in this one, junior outfielder Jabair Khan drove in all three Temple runs, two even coming late in the sixth to tie it up. He finished the day two for four, but St. Joe's was resilient. They stepped in, up in the bottom of the ninth and finished off the Owls in dramatic fashion, your final four to three. But before that game, the Owls were in Ohio to face Dayton. Going into the series, Ryan Ferguson needed a hit in game one in order to tie Temple's all-time hitting streak at 25 games. Unfortunately, the Owls were on the wrong end of a 9-1 beatdown, but Ferguson picked up the hit going one for three, tying Mike Burton's hit streak set back in 1989. Game two was a little better for the Owls, but not good enough as they let up another nine runs in a tight one, 9-7 in the final. Ferguson extends his hit streak going one for four, breaking Burton's record that stood for 22 years. Better news in game three, Temple's bats exploded in a slobber knocker to avoid the sweep 17-11. Byron McCoy went two for four with a home run and three RBI. Only bad news to come out of this one, Ryan Ferguson's historic streak came to an end at 26 games, going 0 for six in a game where his team had 16 hits. Good news for the Owls, their next seven games are at Skip Wilson Field, where they are already 7-0 on the year. The homestand starts this weekend against LaSalle. Joe, back to you. Thanks, Kyle. Being part of a team is kind of like being part of a family, but for two members on the Temple baseball team, that statement holds truer than any other relationship on this team. Updates Brian Kelly has more. Just a third of the way through the 2011 season, the Temple Owls baseball team has already reached its win total of last season. A big part of that success comes thanks to senior pitcher Ben White. On pace to match his 94 strikeouts last season, the senior will surely be missed in 2012. But just because Ben won't be around next season, doesn't mean the team won't have a White. Ben's younger brother, Zach, is a freshman on the team with big shoes to fill in the coming years. I hope I can be as good as him one day, for sure. I mean, he's one of the best pitchers I know. So I'm just hoping that coming here I can refine my skills and be as good as him one day. You know, I mean, it makes me proud to know that you know, he could come here too, you know, following my footsteps. But at the same time, you know, I want him to have his own legacy, you know, be able to, you know, create his own identity on the team and all. The freshman hurler has only pitched one and a third innings this season, giving up two runs in that time. Although he may not be getting the innings, he is learning from his brother and his teammates and putting in his work with the idea that it will pay off as he gets older. I'm proud because he worked you know, as hard as, even harder than I have, you know, to get to this point. You know, and I'm, I'm sure he's going to have four good years here just like I have. Just because Ben is the elder doesn't mean there is nothing to be learned from his younger brother. He's been through a lot, whether it be with surgeries or whether it be, you know, just other problems that he's gone through, you know, that I've never had to deal with and getting through, you know, life stuff that life throws at you. And he's really actually showed me that more than anything, you know, that I can even try to do for him. Question is, will Zach live up to his big brother's career and possibly become a more dominant white? I mean, I'd like to. I know he can do it, that's for sure. But, uh, I mean, he's got just as much talent, probably even more talent than I have. So he's got uh, all the ability in the world to do that. The Temple softball team has had its shares of ups and downs so far this year, ranging from two no-hitters off the arm of pitcher Kristen Maris to weathering a five-game losing streak earlier in the year at the Citrus Classic. The team found itself searching for some consistency, heading into an important week of conference doubleheaders. First up, the Fordham Rams. The Owls split a two-game two set rather, with Fordham 7-4 and 6-4 last weekend. In the first game, the Owls found themselves trailing 4-0 in the first but battled back to take the lead before Allie Robinson belted her second home run of the game to put this one on ice. In the nightcap, it started off much of the same way. The Owls fell behind 3-0 before playing some small ball to rally and take a one-run lead in the second. But the Owls could not hold on in this one. Fordham's Chelsea Palumbo popped a two-run shot 
put the Rams in the lead for a good 6-4, but the Owls were not finished. Later in the week, Temple flew to our nation's capital to take on the GW Colonials, sweeping a doubleheader 2-1 and 3-1. Kristen Maris took the ball in both contests, pitching not one, but two complete games. She helped herself out at the dish as well, going four for eight with a double, a triple, and a two runs batted in. Temple is 16 and 18 overall in the season, but they stand an impressive seven and three in Atlantic 10 Conference play. Lavoy Allen is having a very nice month, and April really just started. First off, the senior forward was given the Jim Maloney Award, presented to the team's most valuable player. He's got all sorts of stats to back up the award, but we'll talk about that in a minute. A few days earlier, Allen was in Houston at the NABC All-Star Game. Allen was one of 20 collegiate players to compete in the event, and as there is no wrong way to eat a Reese's, there was no wrong way he played this game. Oh, you slay me. As Allentown scored 11 points and grabbed 8 rebounds in 20 minutes of action. He goes up for one of his rebounds here, but hits the but soon hits the floor. Luckily though, he is a trooper and would be okay as he would go on to knock down a three-pointer, but it wasn't enough to prevent the West from securing the 113-108 victory. Allen's stats at Temple speak for themselves, but I'm going to talk about them anyway. The senior posted five top 10 finishes in Temple's record book in addition to becoming the all-time rebounding leader. He finished third in block shots and fourth in field goal percentage, a category he was first in before his senior year. Time to take a quick break. Coming up on our sports update, the women's lacrosse team paid a visit to St. Joe's. We have all the details of what, more, of what looked more like a Philly slugfest. We'll be right back.